Hello everybody, video here for you today. There's a ranch in northern Utah that's considered to be the epicenter of the strangest and most disturbing phenomena on earth. Bizarre UFO sightings, animal mutilations, and unusual energies that have proven harmful to humans. The federal government tried and failed for 20 years to find answers, but now a new team of experts has taken over, determined to reveal the secret of Skinwalker Ranch. This is the retro no cap recap of the secret of Skinwalker Ranch season one episode two called Night Visions aired April 7th 2020. For more Skinwalker Ranch recaps there's a playlist link in the upper right. Previously on the secret of Skinwalker Ranch Dr. Travis Taylor was not happy that information was withheld from him by ranch owner Brandon Fugel. Brendan gave Eric permission to share the info with the team, and the episode ended with Eric opening a case, but we don't see what's inside. It ends up being a pneumonium magnet. This type exerts a lot of force. Dr. Taylor says you can lose a finger under one of those. He does not understand what that has to do with not digging on the ranch, which was the impetus for the information being revealed. Eric explains that in his early days at the ranch, cell phone pictures taken while on the mesa contained this artifacting. It did not clear up until he was off the mesa and at Homestead too. Dr. Taylor says later that in addition to everything else, he had heard of the phenomena of electrical devices not working correctly on the ranch. Eric decided to try to reproduce that effect in an effort to see what could make that happen. He shows Drs. Taylor and Sagala how he re reproduced it with another neomodium magnet in a housing behind the foam. Eric says he thinks it may be related to why they have so many device failures and could even be the cause of Ranch Superintendent Thomas Winterton's scalp separation after he dug on the ranch previously. His doctors have not been able to explain it. Dr. Taylor says he hasn't heard anything that would be a reason not to dig. Eric explains that he thinks that since there could be a device buried on the ranch, or above it that is creating a magnetic field and he wants to do all the non-invasive work before starting the day. Dr. Taylor doesn't think that there's enough evidence about bad things happening when you dig, but he eventually agrees to proceed with the non-digging work before they start digging. Dr. Taylor says we've talked about it enough. What's the first step now? He suggests radioactivity, RF, and microwave scans over the entire ranch. Thomas says they have people that can do that the next day. As two different companies are doing these scans, Thomas is driving Dr. Taylor on the ranch and points out Homestead 2. It is a place that people, including Thomas, have seen shadow figures and heard voices on multiple occasions also experienced by people with him at the time. The voices have told him to stop what he was doing and to leave. Dr. Taylor asks about the surrounding land ownership and Thomas tells him the Ute tribe land starts at the top of this hill. He adds that a lot of Native Americans tell him they look to the east and don't even acknowledge that Skinwalker Ranch exists. Thomas further explains that the Navajo and the Utes were allies for a long time, but when the U.S. military arrived to protect white settlers, the Utes allied with soldiers, causing the Navajo to curse the land with skinwalkers, evil entities that can assume many different forms and shapes. Dr. Taylor asks about the north border, and Thomas tells him it's just short of the back cliff in the middle there. Dragon radios them from the sinkhole and tells them that the radiation company has found some crazy stuff that they are going to want to see. Once there, Dr. Taylor can feel air coming out of it. 
Thomas says people that have climbed down into it have felt vertigo and experienced nausea. He also says that there is a cavity inside it that continues down. They don't know how far, but it blasts cold air out of it like an air conditioner. One of the scanning teams that is also scanning for toxic chemicals and nerve agents got a very high dangerous reading. It was a quick hit. Almost like there was a ventilation that carried it, then it disappeared. The RF, or radio frequency scanning, hasn't been done yet, and Dr. Taylor decides to go down in the sinkhole with the tech. They will also scan for toxicity to stay safer. The tech says they should send the O2, which is oxygen sensor, first. And Dr. Taylor says, great, because I like not dying. Nothing weird was detected in the first section, but the RF meter picks up repeating spikes when the antenna is put near the cavity opening. Dr. Taylor begins to feel lightheaded and unable to keep his balance, but there has been no change in the oxygen level. He climbs out of the sinkhole and announces his phone battery completely drained. The techs are not feeling any symptoms, but their phones did shut off. Battery drained as well. The techs have scanned the entire property and everywhere out in the open is fine, but they advised extra caution in any tight area or holes. The tech is unsure about the radiation levels across the entire ranch, but gives each team member a dose meter that will constantly monitor it. In the evening, the team sets up camp and equipment for an overnight stakeout near the Mesa. On his second day on the ranch, Dr. Taylor hopes to see any lights or other phenomena that people have consistently reported for centuries. The ranch is 500 acres are monitored 24 hours a day by dozens of surveillance cameras. Eric can see everything they are doing from the command center. The team turns off all of the lights so they can see views from the infrared cameras, which picks up things that are not perceptible by the human eye. Jim aims a laser at the Mesa and on the monitor they see a second smaller point of light that moves when the laser moves. Dr. Taylor and other members of the team climb up the mesa to investigate. Dr. Taylor sits down and immediately the laser loses intensity and goes out a few seconds later. Thomas reports it's completely dead. Eric tells him that's not the first time something like that has happened and Dragon says, unfortunately, it's typical. Right as the team arrives back at the campsite, the top of the mesa develops a flickering glow. They also hear a significant growl from the same direction. Wild animals are present on the property, so it could have been any one of those. The cloud of light is pulsing like crazy, according to Dr. Taylor. Who moves the camera a little and then sees this beam and it disappears after a few seconds. I notice the defined circle moving left to right, but they don't say anything about it. I cannot get a still image of it, so here's the video of it twice in a row. It's not visible with the naked eye. It shows up only in infrared. They do a radio frequency scan and it maxes out in the direction of the beam. Tom gets a throbbing pain in his head at the same spot he previously had issues with when something caused his scalp to separate from his skull. Dragon drives him to the command center where Caleb sees a knot has formed in that same spot as before. Dr. Taylor is followed and insists that Tom needs to be on the way to the emergency room right now. Caleb drives Tom there. The 
Dragon calls ranch owner Brandon Fugel to give him the news and says they did nothing except shine lights on the mesa. Brandon decides to head there immediately. I'll continue recapping new episodes late Tuesday nights as they air, as well as retro no-cap recaps of the earlier seasons. I'm also doing retro no-cap recaps of the Curse of Oak Island season 6 through 8. All of the other episodes are already done and are in my Oak Island playlist. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment.